Well, welcome and God bless you. I'm Pastor Sheridan Nelson, and I want to take this opportunity right now to welcome you to Sunday morning worship. There is no better way than to begin your week than in worship. And I'm so glad that you chose today to worship here at ABC. And for those of you that's online as well, we greet you and we say, God bless you. So take this opportunity right now to say good morning to everybody around you on your role. For those of you that's in our chats right now, whether you on YouTube, Facebook, or on our website, this is our opportunity to greet and welcome each other as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today. So listen, we're on a mission here at ABC, and that mission is to make disciples that will love God, love his people, and ultimately serve the world. And you're helping us to accomplish that. So let's get ready today to have an amazing day where we give worship and praise to our God. Thank you for joining us today, and let's get ready for worship. Well, greetings, I am Lady J, and I know you've already been welcomed, but I wanna take this opportunity to welcome you to worship also. You know one thing that I always do is I always encourage you to share our service. So, whether you are in the sanctuary this morning or you are joining us online, take the opportunity to share, share, share. That's right, go ahead and share our worship experience. Yes, if you are in the sanctuary, get your cell phone out. You probably already have it out anyway. And make sure you share our worship experience. And if you are online, go ahead, click that share button. We want to take our worship experience all over. We want to connect. And speaking of connect, have you connected with us? There are several ways that you can connect with us here at ABC. How can you do that? Well, of course, there is Facebook. Make sure that you connect with us on Facebook. Like our page so that not only are you viewing us on Sundays, but you can also get other information throughout the week. We have groups that you can connect with, Pursue Strand 3, so make sure you join those groups. There's some others that you can connect with too on Facebook. Follow us on our YouTube channels at Sheridan Nelson TV and Abyssinia Baptist TV. Make sure you do that and you can share those as well. And then if you haven't, make sure you download our app. If you have an Apple, if you have Droid, if you have joy, God bless you, but make sure you connect with our app. 
We want you to connect with us. We are growing, we are expanding, and we need you to connect. And look, don't be selfish. Don't hold all of this greatness to yourself. Make sure you do what? Share, share, share. This is one of the best churches on this side of heaven. And we want to make sure that we are sharing and that we are getting those connected. In this day and age, everybody needs to be connected to a church. But more importantly, they need to be connected to Jesus. And we want to do our part to do just that. Remember, love God, love people, and let's take this all across the world. One of the clear signs of a life that has been transformed is the demonstration of generosity. And I wanna encourage you as we prepare for worship today to prepare to become one of our partners in giving. There are several ways that you can do that. Here at ABC, everything we do to impact our city and to impact the world is through the generosity of our partners and members. And I wanna encourage you to become one of our partners. And if you already are, we thank you for your generosity that helps us to impact our city and to transform lives. There are several ways you can do that, as you see now listed there. And so as we are preparing for worship, one of the things we often do as a part of our worship is prepare our sacrifices and our offerings. So even now, when there'll be an opportunity later for you to give in the service, but you can prepare your offerings now that you will render and bring to God today. Listen, I encourage you to become an investor in the kingdom of God through giving faithfully to the household of God. Listen, I thank you for your generosity. I thank you for your gifts. And as we prepare to worship God today, I thank you for your offerings that have allowed us to be able to transform so many lives and make an investment in our city and abroad. It is all through the generosity of you.
generosity of you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's not just a saying, but that's a command. Praise the Lord, everybody. However you do it, can you clap your hands? Can you lift your hands? Can you just open up your mouth? And let's do it all together. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Can we stand to our feet and prepare for worship this morning? I am expecting great things. Is anybody expecting great things this morning? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as your children, as humbly as we know how, God, just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for life, the health, and strength. God, we don't take it for granted that we can breathe in and breathe out. So we say thank you for the breath of life, God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that has carried us through, God. We thank you for allowing us to make it to this moment, this space, oh God, at this time. We believe that you do all things well. And because you've brought us here, oh God, that you have no choice, oh God, but to meet us right where we are. So God, we thank you, God, that you're so mindful of us. We thank you, God, that you're so mindful of us that you would bring us here just so we can feel your presence, God. We invite you into this space, oh God, virtually and in person. We say, have your way, reign and rule, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Do what you want to do, God. I pray, oh God, that this worship experience, oh God, would be somebody's breakthrough moment, God. We thank you, oh God, that your presence is saturating this place. We thank you, oh God, that as we come into these seats, oh God, and as we sit here and we prepare our minds for worship, oh God, that every weight that we came in here with, you are lifting, oh God. Every hung down head, you are lifting. Every burden, you're taking it away, oh God. So we cast our cares upon you, God, for you care for us, God. So right now in this moment, we say thank you. We say have your way, God. Move like you want to move and let your glory reign. In Jesus' name we do pray. Can you seal that prayer with the praise this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, any grateful people in the room that are grateful for who he is? He's everything we need him to be. So we thank you, Holy Ghost. We thank you, Father. We thank you for being everything we need. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We're going to sing a simple song this morning, and we're going to have a little bit of church. Can I see you clap your hands all over the room?
God, you've been everything I need. You've been everything. I don't know what you've needed from the Lord, but you're still here today, and he's still providing, and he's still making ways. He's still opening doors for you. He's still healing. He's still saving. That's why we continue to call on his name. We love Jesus. Woo, God is the joy and the strength of my life. Whoa! 
appreciate him. Come on, say, God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised, promised to keep me, never to leave to me. all over this place as you're standing. Hallelujah. He's my all in all. He's my all in all. <laughs> oh, whatever I need him to be, when I need him to be it, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he is that. He is that. He is the great I am God. He is the great I am God. Does anybody know him to be the great I am God? He's not restricted. He's not a God that is confined. Lift those hands and worship him. Whatever you need, God says, I am that. I am your everything. I am your everything. I am your everything. I am your everything. There's not a need that you have that God says, I can't meet it. Woo. Hallelujah. God is our all in all. He is my all in all. He is my all in all. God is 
my all. Yes. As we get ready to pray, can you put that in the atmosphere right where you are? Come on, just declare it as we get ready to pray. Everybody say, God is my all. Yeah, yeah. Think about what you need. Think about what we're getting ready to pray for. Come on, declare it. As you're making your way to the altar for whatever needs you have, come on, let's pray together. You can make your way to the altar this morning. God is, God is For those of you online, you can begin to list your prayer concerns, your prayer needs today. Come on, one more time as we get ready to go to God in prayer. Everybody declare, God is, oh, God is. Yes, and all. Hallelujah. I think that's a great affirmation this morning to activate our faith and to stand in faith, believing today that God is my all in all. <laughs> There's not a need that I have. There's not a situation or circumstance that our God cannot prevail and so as we prepare to pray today whatever that need is whatever that concern is and maybe whoever you're praying for today let's put that name in the atmosphere today and let's come into agreement for those of you at the altar whatever your special need is today I want to encourage you this morning to just present it before God and don't take that worry that stress that weight back to your seats with you this morning but believe in faith as I give it to God. And I believe in faith. My God shall supply all of my needs. Watch this. According, not to the, not to the economy, not based on inflation, but according to his riches. Oh, my God. <laughs> according to his riches. He's going to meet my need according to his riches, not what my bank account says, not, not based upon my checkbook, not based upon my credit score, according to his riches. My God is going to supply. Father, we thank you today. We simply thank you for another week that you've seen us through. God, here we are today on the first Sunday in July. God, you've seen us halfway through this year. And for that today, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us from January all the way through June of this year. And we say thank you right now. We know today, God, there's been nobody but you that's kept us, that is keeping us. And we say thank you this morning. We present you a grateful and glad heart today. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that you woke us up this morning, clothed in our right mind, and we had the activities of our limbs, and we were able to press our way to worship, and for that, Lord, we say thank you right now. You are a good God, and you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our worship and father right now before we ask you for anything we just want to say we're thankful today thank you for what you've already done the ways that you've already made thank you this morning now father you already know you already know the requests that are at this altar you already know what's on our hearts you you already know what's troubling us you you already know what kept us up last night you already know the weight and the burdens you already know but God we simply right now in faith present them to you father we get this weight off of us we get this burden off of us and we give it to you God and we give you our needs knowing that you are God who is more than able so we thank you for how you're getting ready to move father for every person that's standing today that that needs answers that needs directions that need doors open father we know you are a way maker 
We know, God, that you can move and you in just one word from you, God, can change our circumstance. So we pray that you speak now. There are persons who stand in need of healing, and we know that you have more medicine in the hem of your garment that can heal a sin-sick world. So we release healing in this house now. God, there's somebody who needs peace, and we know you are a mind regulator. So we declare peace is ours right now. There's somebody, God, who has a financial need right now. And God, we know that all you got to do is crack open a window from heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive it. We already know today and we stand on your word that the cattle upon a thousand hill uh, belong to you, God. So the bills will be paid. We declare it in faith. God, open doors are coming. We declare it in faith. And now we declare our homes will be blessed. We declare it in faith right now in Jesus' name that all of our needs shall be met. You are going to supply. And we know you are a God who will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever think, ask, or even imagine. And based upon your word, we put a praise right there with the clapping of our hands the opening of our mouths we declare in faith that you're meeting our needs now our prayers are being answered now and so in faith we give you a shout in faith we give you victory in faith we make the devil big mad right now because we are praising you in advance for what you're getting ready to do I wish I had a church that would shout I wish I had a worshiper that would release a praise. Tell your neighbor as you go to your seat, whoever you're standing around, it is so. In Jesus' name. Online, somebody type that in the chat right now. It is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. If you believe it, give him a praise in the house. If you believe it, that God is getting ready to move. I dare you to put up some emojis in the chat right now and give our God a mighty, 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 mighty praise. How many of you believing that this second half of this year is going to be better than the first? How many of you believe in it? The second half is going to be better than the first. If you believe it, give him a praise. Give him a praise second half I declare that thing the second half is going to be better than the first listen we want to say good morning God bless you thank you for joining us in worship today for all of you in the room for those of you online if you haven't already take a moment to say good morning to everybody around you in your space around you make sure you look behind you on the side and make sure you greet your worship neighbors this morning make a new friend online all over the house today. We're so glad to have you in worship this morning. Listen, I just have a couple of things that I want to lift up um, as we move further in our worship service this morning. Listen, it has been another great week with our Summer Bible Institute. Have you been blessed by your classes? Man, our classes, so many powerful testimonies and so many encouraging words from the classes on Monday night, our noonday class, and our evening class on Wednesday night and our Thursday classes. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. We growing over the summer. We're growing over the summer, and I'm excited. So if you haven't joined yet, listen, you can jump in this week. If you haven't jumped in yet, please be sure to jump in and attend one of our opportunities for growth this week, and we would love to have you in our classes. Also, let me say this in reference to our Big Serve Sunday, our Big Serve Saturday, our Big Serve Day. Let me say that. It was scheduled to be on next Saturday, but as we've looked at the forecast for the weather going into the weekend for next week, there are some strong chances of rain in our, for our weekend upcoming for next weekend. So the big this 
this Big Serve Saturday where we're going to impact our community. We're pushing this date back to September. So it won't be this Saturday. Um, and so we'll be giving you more information about the next opportunity that we'll be having for our Big Serve Saturday, being that most of our activities was going to take place outside. Um, we're just going to go ahead and make the call now to reschedule it and revamp it. Um, and we'll push that back for the month of September. But there'll be some other opportunities that we have that will be forthcoming for the remainder of July and August that we will be embarking upon um, to touch and transform lives here in our community. Listen, we're excited that the health fair is coming. Our Silver Saints, our Silver Saints Fellowship will be hosting a health fair on July 16th. Seniors living their best life. And so listen, we're encouraging all of our seniors or anyone that wants to come out to be a part um, of um, the host of things that will be taking place on that Saturday. There'll be some exciting vendors here, all providing information and knowledge to help you live a more healthier life. And so come take advantage of those resources that will be here on July 16th at 12 p.m. And so we would love to have you here. Please make note of that so you can get all of the information that will be available to help you live a healthier life. Amen, somebody. Amen. Listen, we want to say congratulations to our MD, Brother Alvin, better known as AJ and Aisha, who is in the back, um, on their marriage. Amen. Can we congratulate them? He's married now, y'all. He's married. <laughs> and Aisha, wave at us, Aisha. She's in the back. She's waving at us back there. They tag team working in ministry, and we're so godly proud of them. They are family, and so we want to say congratulations to them on their recent nuptials, and we praise God for them. Listen, I want to say thank you. Many, listen, y'all, we are all, we're, 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 we're a few thousand dollars short of being halfway to our goal of what we need. And so we're trying to hit this halfway mark. So I, I need you to continue to sow your summer sacrificial seeds. Many of you are doing that. Many of you have done it. Listen, we need to get to at least 10,000 to be able to put this order in for this new unit. And we're a couple of thousand dollars short of being halfway there. Somebody pray Praise God for that. Somebody praise God. So the gifts are coming. The seeds are coming. You can continue to sow those for your summer sacrificial seed. I'm believing and trusting God that before we get through um, this month, we're going to reach that halfway go that halfway mark through your generosity and through the gifts that you're sharing um, with us here in ministry. There are a couple of birthday shout outs that we want to give right before we um, receive our tithes and offerings for this morning. Today is Christian's birthday. I know she's probably in the back right now. Today is her birthday. She turns the big 2-4, y'all. Christian turns the big 2-4, and we praise God for Christian. And we have a, a, a gift for her that we'll give to her in a moment. So after service, y'all make sure you love on her and give her a big God bless you. Happy birthday. You, some of y'all remember when you were 24. Oh, Lord, Jesus. Lord, I, 24, I don't know if I was in church. I don't know if I was in church on my birthday. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I've been preaching since I was um 19, so... I might, I might have stopped talking because I might tell something I don't need to be telling. <laughs> so I'll stop right there. And also to, tomorrow, but we're celebrating today, Lady J turns, you want me to tell him? I know you want to tell him, 46, can we praise God for, come on up Lady J. I think they have something special for you. Come on up Lady, we know she loves flowers. And she turns 46 on tomorrow. Can we appreciate our, our leading lady? Lady J, those are for you. And those are some gifts from Pastor Support. Hey, and the cards are pink. They didn't know you were going to wear pink today. Yeah, they are. This was all my idea. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But this is from the church and the ministry. We want to say happy birthday. Enjoy your birthday on tomorrow, and we love you. Don't we love Lady J? Oh, we're going we gonna to sing? All right, we're going to sing. Come along, y'all. Let's stand. 
Y'all ready? Am I leading it? No, I don't, I don't, I don't. All right. One, two, three. Happy. A uh, couple. Help them out. Help them out. There we go. Happy. Happy birthday. Where Mother Blow at? Where Mother Blow at? There she is. She is back there. My, I know Mother Blow is ready for the other version. We need a little more energy. There it is right there. Go ahead and give it to him. <laughs> It's your birthday. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> Happy. Happy. <laughs> Happy. All right. Listen, we know. Many of you have cards and love offerings for Lady J. If you have them, the treasure chest is available. You can just bring those now and um, drop those in the treasure chest, and we that they will make sure First Lady gets that. For those of you, I know many of you have already gone online, right on, uh, on your giving. You can sow your $46 love offering seed to Lady J on all of the platforms for those of you online you can go ahead and sow and give now those offerings are coming in and will be given directly to lady j on all of those platforms today as we love on her we believe in sowing the the age and we do it with our friends we do it with our family we bless them with a dollar for every year the older you get right Thank God for the grace. We thank God. So go ahead and sow those gifts. If you need envelopes as we get ready to receive our tithes and offerings for this morning, uh, you just lift your hands wherever you are. Our ushers are here, and they have envelopes that are available as we prepare to sow and give our offerings on this first Sunday of the month. If you need one, just lift your hands, and they will make sure there's hands going up as we prepare to sow and give today. Online, let's sow and let's get ready to give for our virtual community as we prepare to sow and give on this first Sunday. Let's take our phones out now. Let's lift up our cards, our envelopes, whatever means we're honoring God. For those of you even at home, as you participate with us, lift your phone now, right now. Stretch your hand towards your screen as we collectively believe in faith. And we sow and we give because we trust God's system. We trust God's way. Father, now as we sow, as we give for this week, we present to you grateful and glad hearts. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us the ability. We thank you for the streams and the multiple ways that we earn income. And we know, God, that you are the ultimate source of all of our provisions. So, God, now receive our gifts as we sow and we give to you today the first fruits of this week, the first fruits of our labor, the tenth that is set aside and deemed holy. We consecrate it and give it to you now. Receive it now as an act of faith and as an act of obedience. And we stand on every promise that your word declares. The blessings are already ours. The promises are already ours. And Father, we so love offerings today to, to encourage Lady J to, because we believe she is good ground. And we so and we bless her today for her work, her labor, for the gift that she is to our church and to us. We thank you for her ministry of teaching, her heart for service, and the way she partners here in this ministry for impact in your kingdom. So we sell love offerings into her life today. 
And God, your word declares that you will always give seed to the sower. So as we sow, we're believing for a return in our lives a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, we declare it. Amen. Let's sow, let's give today. We'll collect our envelopes at the end of service. Let's receive our worship team as they come. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands and begin to worship him right there? Hallelujah. We love you, Lord, just for who you are. so good you've always been there for me to supply my every need you were there when I was lonely you were there in all my pain you guided my footsteps my shelter from the rain It was you who made my life complete. You are to me my everything, and that is why I sing. Jesus, I love because you care. Because you care. Anybody glad that He cares for you? I couldn't imagine. What life would be if you were in there? Jesus, I love you, yeah. Jesus, I love you because you care. Because you care. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine what life would be if you were in there. You are the joy of my salvation. You're the peace. In my storm, loving arms protect me and shelters me from harm. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. My strong tower, you're my dearest and best friend. It was you who made my life complete, and you are to me my everything, and that is why I see Jesus, I love you because you care, because you care. I couldn't imagine.
hands together and give our God praise. Anybody here in love with the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I want to invite you to stand, those of you in this room, and for those of you at home and abroad, and I want to invite you to the Gospel of Luke chapter 10. We continue in our summer series entitled Little Stories with Big Truths. And today I invite you to Luke's Gospel, the 10th chapter. And while the story starts at verse 30, I want to go up a few verses so we can help better understand the context of the text, and I want to start reading at verse 25, and you'll see the parable starts at verse, or the story starts at verse 30, but let me just go back up a few verses to about verse 25. Luke 10, I'll start reading at verse 25. Y'all ready? Y'all there? All right. Here it is. And Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Or what is your understanding of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Do this and you'll receive and have eternal life. But he wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, here it is, and who is my neighbor? Who, who exactly is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. He was stripped him, he who was stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came, looked, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. He went, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take 
care of him and whatever more you spend when I come again I will repay you so which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves and he said he who showed mercy on him then Jesus said to him go and do likewise. This is the reading of God's word. Today I want to tag this text as the Spirit shall guide us, and I want to talk about a good neighbor. A good neighbor. You may be seated. Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to worship collectively and to hear your word. We open up our hearts and our minds now that we might receive what the Spirit releases to us today. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. In Jesus' name, we say together, amen. I believe most of us, as we gather today, most of us in this room, we are somewhat familiar with the insurance company State Farm. And if you've spent any time watching TV, you've probably caught one of State Farm's commercials. I think now one of the new the newest personalities of State Farm commercials, most of us have become familiar with Jake from State Farm. We've seen the commercials where Jake is dealing with some life issue, life crisis, as he encounters those that are a part of that commercial. And he encounters these individuals, couples, individuals who are experiencing some kind of life crisis. And at the end of the crisis, Jake from State Farm comes to their aid, sharing how State Farm will provide them with quality coverage and service to aid them in their time of need. And I think by now most of us know the end after he assures them that State Farm will be there to provide them with service, to provide and assist them with their needs, we know the end, there is always that infamous tagline. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. It's interesting that State Farm has coined this whole notion of being like a good neighbor through their service, through their assistance, through their aid that they will provide, they have made their mantra, they have built their brand behind this whole notion of being to us like a good neighbor. This whole idea of being a good neighbor is exactly what is at the heart in this story that Jesus tells that we know affectionately as the story of the Good Samaritan. Now, in order for us today to get the big truth of our story, we must now understand the context in which the story is given. Here it is, when we go back up to verse 25, we know that Jesus was teaching in the public square, as many rabbis would do, and now there is a lawyer who, in, the, in this context, as Jesus is teaching in the public square, now poses a question to Jesus in an effort to trap Jesus with his answer. The lawyer poses the question of how does one inherit eternal life? And Jesus, in turn, asks him, what does the law say? 
And he replies, based upon his own understanding of the Deuteronomic law, he understands that the law says you are, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus then in terms, after he has given the right answer, Jesus informs the lawyer that you have answered rightly. So go ahead and do just as you have declared. But catch the lawyer's rebuttal. The lawyer has a rebuttal. Jesus says, go, you've answered correctly. Go and do likewise. Go and live that out, and you will have eternal life. But then the lawyer comes back with a rebuttal, and his rebuttal is now setting the stage and the context for which Jesus now will share this story. The lawyer's rebuttal is, who exactly is my neighbor? We see that the lawyer has the right question, but y'all, he got the wrong motive. Those exposing, thus, it now begins to expose the heart of the matter of who do I have to be neighborly to? <laughs> Instead of Jesus answering him, Jesus now tells the story that will reveal who is the neighbor and what a good neighbor does. That's the question that's at stake today. This lawyer poses this question, who exactly do I have to be neighborly to? Who is my neighbor? I think the question that he poses is a question today that calls for our consideration in the time that we have together. And in Jesus telling this story, Jesus will ultimately reveal to us this morning the big truth that he wanted his audience to get and the big truth that he wants all of us to get today. Anybody interested? Here it is. Jesus now tells this story. Notice the subtleties of how Jesus begins to tell this story. Now, a couple of things I just want to point out along our way. The first observation you will notice in this story today as Jesus begins to tell it is you will notice that the Gospels, they do not specify that this is a parable that Jesus tells. Normally, when you're reading the Gospels, here's a tidbit for your own reading. The scriptures would normally reference and say, and Jesus gave them a parable. It begins to reference that from the offset. But it's interesting, when it comes to the story of the Good Samaritan, it does not state whether or not this was a parable. I believe this something you can't just skate and skirt over. It has significance here. Because as Jesus begins to tell this story, what I tend to side with is that this was a story of something that actually happened. It actually happened. And the audience and all were familiar. They had read the newspaper. <laughs> they had got the CNN feed. They all had heard about this particular story that Jesus now tells. Now, why I share it and do you suggest that? Because understand, if this was some fictitious story, the, the Jews could immediately dismiss it. They could immediately dismiss it because now you got to understand that the, the, the central character of the text is a Samaritan. He's talking to Jews. So if this is something that never happened, then the Jews would automatically dismiss it. They would automatically say, 
this is something that could never happen. A Samaritan could never do what this particular Samaritan does in this text. So one must side with that as Jesus now tells this story, this is a story that actually occurred, but now Jesus will use this story to reveal some big kingdom truth and principle based upon the question that this Jew has tried to raise to him to trap him. So Jesus says, a certain man, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Here's the first observation if you're taking notes. Notice the first thing that Jesus references and makes clear is this. If you're taking notes, write this down. Notice an undeniable human in need. An undeniable human in need. Notice Jesus says a certain man. A certain man. Now, I love it. I love the subtleties, and I love how Jesus is so crafty. Notice now, the lawyer has posed this, trying to trap Jesus up to answer the question, who do I have to be neighborly to? Yeah, the law says, love my neighbor as myself, who is my neighbor? Do you see the lawyer begins to try to what? Generalize the question. Who do I have to be neighborly to? I know, I know. We like to pick and choose, don't we, y'all? Yeah. What, what, do, do you see what the lawyer is trying to do? The lawyer is trying to generalize, but yet he is trying to restrict and confine his generosity, his hospitality, his service to a particular kind of person. Are y'all with me? But Jesus starts by saying a certain man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, and he was stripped of his clothing, wounded, beat up, and, and they departed, leaving the man half dead. Now, there's some things we got to understand here, but right now from the offset of that, you can see that this situation has left a man in a terrible predicament. Do I have any witnesses in here? We can see from the offset of this that this man is, has an undeniable need. He has an undeniable circumstance. Anybody who looked at him could tell what he was in a crisis. He was in need of assistance. I don't care. I don't care what color, what creed. If you walked by, you saw this man, you knew that this was a man in crisis and he needed some assistance. Now, what's interesting, there are several things that we must understand about this text. That road from Jerusalem down to Jericho was a very highly traveled road, and it was about a 17-mile stretch from Jerusalem to, to Jericho, and it was a busy, dangerous route that many temple workers would travel, leaving the temple in Jerusalem, going to their homes, villages, and their places down through Jericho. It was filled, it was traveled with many temple workers going back and forth. Now, one would raise this, that with a road that is so highly traveled, that you would have thought that Rome or the temple would have made some community investments to improve the road conditions, knowing how highly the road was traveled. I can't get no help in here. But yet, for some reason, Rome never makes the investment, nor does the temple make any investments to see that the road being dangerous receives some repairs, some upgrades to better the quality for travel for people leaving the, 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 the temple and Jerusalem traveling down to Jericho. But whatever reason, it goes unaddressed and this road 
never receives any repairs and what happens is people getting robbed and mugged that travel down this road. No improvements were made. We see these kind of neighborhoods and communities all the time, don't we? No investments, no improvements, and yet the conditions and crime fester in places where there is no investments. Now, on this particular day, a man is traveling, a Jewish man, understand, is traveling and gets jacked, gets robbed, gets beat up, stripped, robbed, taken, and left half dead. The man's in a crisis, y'all. And while the lawyer wants to speak in generalities, Jesus puts specifics on this condition. <laughs> Jesus puts a face to the crisis. This ain't just no anybody. It's a certain man, a Jewish man that has an undeniable need. Now, here it is. So we see that there's a man in crisis, he, a, a, an undeniable human in need, a man been beat up, left half dead, been robbed. And notice what Jesus says next. Now, by chance, this man who has been left for dead along the side of the road, by chance, wouldn't you know it? Here comes a priest and a Levite traveling down this road by chance. Priest comes, trap, sees the man in the ditch, and the priest keeps going. The bishop, the pastor. The priest keeps going. Sometime later, a Levite comes. The Levite looks, sees. Somebody say sees the man, bloody, beat up, half dead, and he too keeps on going. Now I know, I know, I know, I already feel your energy. I know, I know you with your self righteous self. I know. I know, I, I feel it, I feel it. I see somebody watching me right now and say, how could they? How could they just keep on walking and leave a man in that kind of condition? I don't know how you do it. You do it every day. You come and sit in a church and do it every week every day every opportunity every time you hear we need volunteers with this we need help with that you see the need but yet you respond like the priest and the Levite. So, so, so here it is. So we see an undeniable human need, but then secondly, here's what the text shows us, an unresponsive priest and Levite. God Almighty. They, they see the need. They are aware that there is somebody in need that has an undeniable need, but yet the priest and the Levite made the choice to be unresponsive. They, they didn't respond to this man in need. Huh. They, 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 their response was no response. 
They looked, they saw, and they kept going. They're, they're unresponsive. I, and, I, and, I, and I said, what? The, Jesus, as he tells the story, he doesn't give us any reasons why the priest and the Levite kept going. And so if you allow me, if you, if we, can we deal with the tension in the text? Because I believe I have several considerations. I have several things that I want us to consider that I believe become valuable reasons why the priest and the Levite kept going. As I wrestled, as I tried to understand this text, I, I believe there are several things that, that became the primary contributors of why the priest and the Levite chose to be unresponsive in this situation. Do y'all want to hear my offerings? I believe that maybe, just maybe, just maybe, because the text don't tell us, but just maybe. One of the reasons that they were unresponsive is because, one, they were pretending. That the situation wasn't as bad as it appeared to be. <laughs> they, they pretended. They pretended that his situation wasn't that bad. That he was going to be all right. <laughs> they pretended that maybe... He could be, you know how we do, working with the robbers. And if I stop and help him, the robbers might get me too. This could all be a hoax. You know, you know how we like to justify it. Huh? I, the world we live in now. I ain't finna help no stranger. Not this kind of world we live in now. You know everybody full of tricks and games. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But 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 we also use it to justify us not doing anything. And so maybe he pretended, maybe he pretended that. This man ain't really in this situation. He ain't really, he playing. <laughs> or, or, or here's the other consideration. Maybe, maybe if he wasn't pretending, maybe they were preoccupied. I ain't got time to stop. I got to get to the temple. I'm already running late. Maybe they were preoccupied with their own concerns. If I, if I stop and help him, I can't get to where I'm trying to go. Maybe, and that, isn't that what we do? Sometimes we, we, we pretend that things are not as what, as bad as they seem to be. And then there are times, y'all, where we are preoccupied with ourselves. And we don't want to be inconvenienced. We don't want to go out of our way. I can't, I know, I know, I know, I know. We don't want to go out of our way to help and aid somebody else, my God. We don't want to make the sacrifice oh, of my time and of my resources to assist somebody because I got stuff going on in my life. I got my own crazy family members. I'm trying to balance my own life. I got needs myself, and I ain't got time to be trying to help somebody else figure something else out when I got stuff going on in my own life. And can I say sometimes... We become so consumed with our own affairs that we don't have time or we don't make the time to help anybody else out. 
So, may, so maybe, maybe he was pretending. Maybe, maybe their unresponsiveness was due to them pretending that this situation wasn't that bad. Or maybe it was because these two were preoccupied with their own situations. Oh, here's my last one before we move. Maybe they just put it off for somebody else. The priest puts it off on the Levite. The Levite puts it off on whoever coming behind him. Somebody else is coming. <laughs> Man, how many of us have put helping somebody off else off on somebody else. Somebody else will do it. We sit in church, know there's a need for volunteers, know there's a need for servers, but we put it off. Somebody else will feed them. Somebody else will serve them. Somebody else will do children's ministry. Somebody else will volunteer. You sit there and you put it off. For somebody else to do. Somebody else will get to it. I know it's a need, but somebody else will do it. <laughs> Yet, the priest, the good church going priest, the good religious priest, the good religious Levite are either pretending, they're either preoccupied, or they simply have put it off on somebody else to meet the need of this man in crisis. Jesus says, the priest comes, the Levite comes, they walk by, they see it, and they walk by, and they fail to respond. But a Samaritan comes down the same path sees the man in the ditch, stripped, beaten, robbed, and left half dead. But what does the Samaritan? There's a word that he uses there. He says, the Samaritan sees him and has compassion. Jesus, help me. He had, he sees him. See, all of them saw it. <laughs> but only the Samaritan was moved by compassion. He's moved with compassion. Here's the last and final point of the sermon for today. If you take your notes, you, we've seen Jesus has made it clear that there's an undeniable human in need. And we've seen, secondly, an unresponsive priest and Levite. And then thirdly and finally, what we see is an unrestricted act of compassion by the Samaritan unrestricted, it's an unrestricted act of compassion that is demonstrated by this Samaritan. He sees him and he is moved by compassion. I believe that's the crux of the matter. That becomes the heart of the matter. A lot of us see needs, but we ain't moved with compassion. A lot of us are made aware of concerns, but we are not moved to compassion. I know this is rubbing you the wrong way today. You with your church going self claiming to be full of the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ can sit in churches week in and week out. You can hear about needs in schools. You you can see it on news. You can hear about those who are hungry. You can hear about the prison rates in our communities. You can hear about all of these injustices. But guess what? You are not moved to compassion. Can I just go ahead and be brutally honest? You ain't moved until it hits your house. 
You ain't moved until you done lost your job. I can't get no help here. You ain't moved until you the one in the hospital. I can't get nobody to holler back at your boy. You ain't moved until it's your son or daughter that's been stopped by the police and now you want now to get concerned about social justice. No, you ain't moved until it's been your child that's been shot. You ain't moved until it's your child in the school system with failing and passing grades. You ain't moved until it becomes personal. Now all of a sudden, you got an interest. But do you see what real compassion is? It wasn't a Samaritan in the ditch. It wasn't a Samaritan who was bloody and beaten. But he saw the man and was moved with compassion. Why? Because he simply identified with another human being in a crisis. Chris, maybe what helped him identify it because he was traveling down the same road and maybe as he looked at that man, he thought to himself, it could have been. It could have been me. And I'm going to do for somebody else. What I would want. What I would want somebody to do for me. You know, I had to tell some of my friends, you know, every, every, everything now is a social media opt. And there we got some friends that I, that I, that I, that I, I'll go ahead and say it, what I call social media whores. They, everything is a post. Everything is for some likes. And, and I have some preacher friends that I, that, I, that, that I say he's a social media whore. He, he, he gets off on that attention. And one, and one of the things I, could, I cannot stand is when you out in the community serving homeless and going to union missions. And, and now all of a sudden it becomes a media post. And now you got people's faces that are in predicaments and crisis. But now you're using it as an opt to get likes, to get views. And, but yet, you are not even sensitive that there's a human in the line with the plate. And would you want your face paraded online to get likes when you, if it was you on the other end needing the plate? What compassion is, is I am sensitive because I identify with the person in need. It could be me hungry. It could be me homeless. I can't get nobody to talk back to me now. It could be me in their shoes. And because now I can identify, I move to do what I can to help somebody in need. Do I have a church in here? That's what a real church is. That's what a real Christian is. And that's what it means to be compassionate. The Samaritan identifies with the man in need, not based on class, not based on race, not based on religion, or not what they could do for him in return. Notice how Jesus tells the story. He's talking to Jews, two Jews, religious Jews, left a Jew in the ditch. <laughs> and now the Samaritan, who the Jews don't even like, <laughs> comes to the aid and the assistance of a Jew. One would have to wrestle with, would a Jew have even look twice to come help a Samaritan. A Jew 
would have left a, he would have left the Samaritan there. But now you got the Samaritan coming to the aid of a Jew. And he's moved with compassion. He's, somebody say compassion. He's moved with compassion. What, what does compassion look like? Jesus tells us, and I'm done. He says, he saw him and he had compassion. What does compassion look like? Here it is. So he went to him, bandaged him, his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an end. He don't even know this joker. Took care of him. On the next day, if now that that would have been good right there. On the next day, he went when he departed. He took out his American Express card, left it on tab at the end, and said to him, "Take care of him, and whatever more you spend." When I come again, I will repay you. Oh, Jesus. What was the reason for the Samaritan to doing all this? Simply his move of compassion out of the goodness and kindness of his heart. Out of the goodness and kindness of his heart. Do you see what the Samaritan did? Can I, can I, can I give y'all something? It's real simple. He did what he could. Y'all you, you, missed it. Look at somebody and say, do what you can. Ain't nobody asking you to do it all. Ain't nobody asking you to solve all the problems of the world. Ain't nobody asking you to solve all the needs of the church. But, but look at somebody on the other side and say, do what you can. It can. Can you at least do what you can? See, see, here it is. We like to what use excuses. I ain't, I ain't as young as I used to be. I can't be going out there and doing all this stuff. And so we try to justify our inactivity, our unresponsiveness. I'm on a fixed income. And we already know you on a fixed income. But can you do what you can? Can you do what you can? Look at somebody else and tell them, do what you can. That's what the Samaritan did. He did what he could. You might not be the one that can go to the the children, but guess what? You might be able to be the one to pass them a snack. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You can go to the school. You might not be the one that can do all of the tutoring, helping with homework, but guess what? You can play a game or an activity. Do what you can. I can't get nobody to talk back to me. You can go to the nursing home and sing some songs and do some things. I can't get nobody to talk back to me in here today. Look at somebody and tell them, do what you can with what the Lord has entrusted to you. If it's financial, if it's your gifts, your skills, do what you can to help somebody else in need. And so Jesus says, so which one of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves. I love it. The lawyer asks this to trap Jesus. Jesus tells the story and now forces the lawyer to answer. So which one of the three was a neighbor to the man who fell among thieves. <laughs> Do y'all see it? Which one was the neighbor, church? Which one was the neighbor? And he said, he, the lawyer, has to answer now. He don't want to answer. But he says, he 
who showed mercy on him. And then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Here's the big truth. Write this down. The question is not who is my neighbor, but rather to whom can I be neighborly? Did y'all catch it? The lawyer asks, who do I need to be a neighbor to? Jesus flips it and says, it ain't a matter of who is your neighbor. The question you got to ask is to whom can I be a neighbor? Y'all see the difference? To whom can I be a neighbor? And the answer is, wherever there is a need and people need us, we can be a neighbor. Wherever there's a need and I have the wherewithal to meet that need, then I need to be a neighbor in that situation. Most of us don't even live around here, but we see needs around here. So as a church, we are neighborly in the neighborhood that our church is planted. But that ain't just for here. That's for you in Portsmouth. That's for you in Newport News. That's for you that's watching me in Houston, New York, and Florida. Wherever we are, I wish I had a witness here. I am to be a neighbor. Can I go ahead and shut this down? Wherever there's a need and you can do something about that need, then look at your neighbor and say, then be a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor. Help your neighbor. Help, help a brother. Help a sister. And don't be bound by race, color, or creed. If you can do something about a need then you need to do everything you can to meet that need to be a good neighbor because here's the thing y'all when you and I do that then we look like Jesus because Jesus is the best neighbor any of us can ever have because that's what Jesus was to us. Do I have a church in here? Jesus was our neighbor. He was neighborly towards us. He saw the predicament that we were in. He saw the crisis that we were in and watch what he did as a good neighbor. He left out of his throne in glory, out of his mansion in glory, saw the shape that we were in. Jesus didn't even live in our same community. He wasn't even from our same hood. He left the royal palace sitting on the right hand side of the father, came down to our hood. Do I have a witness here? Was born in the slums, was born in a manger, was born in a barn. He came and he identified with us. Do I have a witness here? And he was a good neighbor. He sacrificed for us. He gave for us. He took what he had to give to us, to help us get on our feet. We were the man in the text. We were left half dead, but Jesus was a good neighbor. Slap by with your neighbor and say, I'm so glad that Jesus is my neighbor. I'm so glad that Jesus was my good neighbor. And what you and I got to do, slap by with three people and tell them, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. In Portsmouth, go and do it. In Newport News, go and do it. In Norfolk, go and do it. Whatever a state that you're in go and do it go and do likewise and be a good neighbor be a good neighbor be a good neighbor and like a good neighbor put your name right there and like a good neighbor, Nancy is there. And like a good neighbor, Chris is there. And like a good neighbor, Phil is there. And like a good neighbor, Sheridan is there. And like a good neighbor, Abney is there. And like a good neighbor, the Nicholsons are there. And like a good neighbor, is there can you imagine 
what kind of ministry we could have if everybody was neighborly. Come on, let's stand. What, 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 what could our communities look like if everybody was neighborly? What, what, what could we make the world if everybody was neighborly? Jesus says, be a good neighbor. <laughs> the Samaritan was a good neighbor. Because he didn't try to look for a certain kind of person. To be neighborly to him. He saw a need and he did what he could to meet that need. He helped a man out that was in need. Be a good neighbor. Do what you can to help somebody in need. Every head bow. As we get ready to conclude our service today and prepare for communion, are you the priest? Are you the Levite? Ooh. Are you preoccupied? Are you putting it off for somebody else to do? Are you pretending that what you see ain't really what you see? It ain't that bad? Man, right now, ask God to work on your heart. Now that the truth has been, been revealed through his word today, let's walk in truth. Let's walk in truth. Let's walk in truth. Ask God right now in this moment, God, give me a heart of compassion. I don't want to just see needs. I see it all around me. But give me compassion where I will move to act. That's what compassion is. I'm moved to act. I'm moved to action. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give me the spirit. Give me the heart of the Samaritan. Just like you. Jesus, I want to be a good neighbor. I want to be in a church where I'm neighborly. Wherever I live, wherever I work, make me a neighbor. In Jesus' name. If you're ready to walk in that reality, I want you to just begin to release praise in this house today. Can you just look at two or three people and say, let's be good neighbors, let's be good neighbors. Let's be good neighbors. We're all a part of God's body. Yes. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. As we prepare to close the day, if you have not received communion today, if you didn't receive it coming in, if you would just kindly lift your hands, they will make sure you get some. Our, I see a few hands raised on this side and back. For those of you at home, I would encourage you now to go into your kitchens to get something to commune with us. Go get some juice. Go get a wafer, whatever you have, crackers, so you can participate in this time of communing together as we are preparing our communion. As we, has everyone been served? I want to invite you to turn your attention right before we commune towards the screens today. And let's share in the reading together of our membership covenant. Let's prepare to affirm that together today. Having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and having been baptized 
and in agreement with Abyssinia Baptist Church, I commit myself to God and to the other members to do the following. Let's read together. I will protect the unity of my church by acting in love towards other members, by refusing to gossip, by following the leaders. I will share, am I ahead of you all? How about I turn this way? I will share the responsibility of my church by praying for its growth, by inviting the unchurched to attend, and by warmly welcoming those who visit. I will serve the ministry of my church by discovering my gifts and talents, by being equipped to serve by my pastor, by developing a servant's heart. I will support the testimony of my church by attending faithfully, by living a godly life, by giving regularly. In Jesus' name, we say together, amen. It will never lose its power. The blood that Jesus yes way back When does he give it to you? From it will its power. This is the body of our Lord that was taken and bruised on that cross for us. Let's take now and eat together. This cup today represents the blood of our Lord that was shed for the remissions of our sin. Let's now take and drink together. In the name of our Father, name of our Son, name of the Holy Ghost, we say together, amen, amen. Let's all stand all over the sanctuary for those that are not standing. Let's prepare today to leave and for the benediction and blessing. If you would be so kind, they're coming around. And please, you can drop those containers in the baskets. They will collect your offerings as you exit the building today. Aren't you glad you came to worship today? I pray that you have a great holiday on tomorrow. If we can all turn towards the middle and we give the benediction and blessing. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for this opportunity to worship. Now we pray that your power, your presence, and your peace be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, we all say together, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. God bless you. Have a great week. I know.